I remember playing Gek 64 Enter the Gecko back in the day. This is one of those games we would rent, play through a bit, and then return. I never really gravitated toward that game like I did Banjo-Kazooie or Super Mario 64, both of which are still my all-time favorites. I definitely never played Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko, or at least I don't remember ever playing it. Gex always confused me a little bit. Was this a Geico thing? Like was Gex supposed to be the Gecko from those commercials? They both had a British accent, they're both Geckos, and I wondered if Geico had sponsored these games. But apparently they're not connected? Gex is its own series of games, and the character of Gex is definitely much more cheeky than the Geico commercial Gecko ever has been. I feel like the Gex series is one of those games that has an acquired taste. I know some people insist that the only way to play these games is on the PlayStation rather than the 64, but since I tend to enjoy the Nintendo brand more often than PlayStation, not because of any particular reason, mainly because the nostalgia simply isn't there for me as we never owned a PlayStation growing up, I decided to take a look at Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko, which does contain a holiday themed level in the holiday broadcasting channel Totally Scrooged. This is the first time I've ever played Gex 3, and I will admit after hearing some rather terrible reviews online of this game, I was getting ready for disappointment. But instead, I actually enjoyed playing through this first channel of the game. The level wasn't too difficult seeing as it's the first one, and it stands as a great entryway into playing this game and discovering how it all works. Gex travels around the level completing various missions. Choosing one of the three missions will give the player a clue about where to go or what to look for through a flyover cutscene. Then it's off to the level to search, explore, tail whack some enemies, and solve a puzzle or two. The missions can be accomplished in any order, and each time Gex completes one he receives a remote, which acts kind of like a Power Star in Super Mario 64 or Jiggies in Banjo-Kazooie allowing you to open up new levels to explore. The missions range from searching the level for ice blocks that need to be whittled down into sculptures, to defeating a mini boss and an evil Santa who tosses presents at you. Another fun mission takes Gex snowboarding down a hillside, searching for evil elves and whacking them with your tail to take them out. When you complete a mission and collect the remote, Gex exits the level and you have to go back in and restart. This is one of those really annoying features of early collectathons where you often had to leave resetting your counts for many of the collectibles and having to start completely over. Here there are blue beetle medallions Gex collects which once you've found them all you receive another remote. But that counter for beetles restarts every time you find another remote, which can be really frustrating, especially if you're collecting most of them on your way to another mission's completion and have to start from zero because you picked up the remote and exited the level. The enemies in this level did not prove too difficult at all to fight, mainly consisting of elves who ice skate, run around with presents, or snowboard down the hill. Because of the relative ease of the level, I found myself enjoying a quick breeze through this game, instead of feeling frustrated at dying over and over and over trying to accomplish anything at all. Sometimes this game really shows its age though, with the pesky camera controls. There were a couple of times I couldn't get the camera to move the way I needed it to to be able to see and aim Gex towards a particular spot. Cameras in these 64 games were often clunky, and thankfully as time went on developers have figured out better ways to handle them. There was also one particular place where I found it extremely difficult to get up onto a building that clearly had an item I needed on top of it. I kept trying to use Gex's spring jump, and for some reason at times the jump would send me really high, and others it wouldn't send me high enough. There was also snow on the roof which made it slippery, and I found myself falling back down to the snow too many times to count. Okay, so here's the moment. This is obviously a holiday Christmas level. So how Christmassy is it? Well, we've got snow, so check. Christmas houses decorated for the season? Check. Dancing candy canes that talk to you? Check. Elves, Santa, toy soldiers, snowboarding, a literal North Pole, ice skating, mailboxes with beetles inside. Okay, maybe that's not so Christmassy, but you get the point. This is completely centered around Christmas through and through. 
Even with Gex's rather annoying constant movie quotes and commentary, I found myself really liking the Christmas atmosphere. I only wish the controls in this game were a little better and there was a little more to do in the level, but overall I gotta say, this was a nice pleasant romp through the holiday broadcasting channel. Gex 3 delivered on being really Christmassy. If only Santa and the elves hadn't been evil, I think this would have taken the cake as the most Christmassy of all. I think the cheeky vibe of the entire Gex franchise makes this level a tiny bit of a Christmas joke, but it still ranks as probably the most Christmassy yet. In fact, I'm going to give this game a 90% of a Christmas pie that's really good but just a little tart in the middle. I have a few more days and a few more games to play, so let's see if anything can unseat the current most Christmassy retro game of them all, Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko.